I recently ran into my childhood music teacher, some of you know that, I put it on Facebook, Mr. James Clifton. I could tell you so much about Mr. Clifton. Did anyone else have just an amazing music teacher when you were a child in school? Music teachers are a blessing from the Lord, Bethany <laughs> and Ella. This season always makes me think about Mr. Clifton because Mr. Clifton taught us every Christmas song under the sun. From Ave Maria to Silver and Bells and everything in between, including Do You Hear What I Hear? Listen to these lyrics and I'm cut some of them short. But it began, said the night wind to the little lamb. Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. Next verse said, the little lamb to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea. And then said the shepherd board to the mighty king, do you know what I know? A child, a child shivers in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold, telling the Christmas story. And then said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. The child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. The song offers a series of questions from one community member to another about whether they see, hear, perceive, or share the same experience of the season. Do you see what I see, hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? These, this is a perfect series of questions that leave us open to more possibilities beyond what we ourselves can see. Because the truth of the matter is sometimes we can't see here. Sometimes we can't perceive with our senses anything that God might be doing in the world. There is often such a dissonance in this season, such a tension between the faith and the joy we are supposed to have and the hard and painful things we are experiencing. And in that tension, sometimes we wonder if God is doing anything at all. Like celebrating the Advent theme of joy this morning and speaking at a gun violence vigil this evening where some families of nearly 600 gun violence victims in Chicago alone will be gathered this evening. There's a dissonance in my spirit today. These things are clashing because Advent joy and almost 600 gun violence victims, mostly young people, just don't go together. There's a dissonance for some of us, not only with the Advent theme, but maybe even with your entire faith life, that Jesus is our Savior, but there seems to be so much that we still are at risk of experiencing so much we seem to need to be saved from. There's a disharmony between what we have been taught to believe about the faith and our lived reality for many of us. And this disharmony causes us to wonder. Let me encourage you that wonder is a wonderful place to be. It's good to wonder every once in a while. When the tension, the dissonance hits you and you wonder what, if anything, God is doing in the world, the best way to resolve this wondering is to ask. That's what John the Baptist did in our scripture today. John the Baptist, the one who cried out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, called people to repentance, 
baptized those who responded, even baptized Jesus, has been faithful to his call as prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, and now finds himself in prison, he's got some dissonance in prison after Jesus' arrival on the scene. Don't miss that. He has prepared the way for Jesus. Jesus has come, and now John is in prison. And Jesus knows this. John sends word by his posse to Jesus saying, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? And I just wonder if some words were left out considering the circumstances. I think John had more to say to Jesus. Can you imagine the cognitive dissonance John is experiencing? Some of you can because if you're honest, you're experiencing the same. I've done this for Jesus and that for Jesus. I've done this for the church and that for the church. I've done this for my community and for my family and for the hungry and for the children. I've done what I believed was the right thing to do, the good thing to do, the godly thing to do, just to find myself in bad situations with unfavorable conditions. It begs the question, just like John asked it, are you the one who was to come or are we to wait for another? John is just being honest. He's rightfully discouraged, rightfully confused, rightfully experiencing cognitive dissonance, so he is rightfully asking the question. And I wonder if there's any honest Christians who can say that they've had this same question of Jesus. And maybe it wasn't personal stuff you were going through that has made you wonder. Maybe it's the every day that every day we hear of more shootings, carjackings, downright creative violence and criminality affecting so many of us on every level. Let us not forget the white collar crime. Such that it begs the question, are you, Jesus, who you say you are, or are we to wait for another? John is just being honest, and sometimes we won't get answers until we ask some questions. Jesus responds and tells John's friends, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with the skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Jesus tells John's friends to go and tell John what they have heard with their own ears and seen with their own eyes. Why? Because John's current circumstances do not allow him to see. He's in jail, prison, he's isolated, he's discouraged, and he can't see, nor hear. He's probably also disillusioned because the one for which he paved the way has left him sitting in prison. Can you put yourself in John's shoes for a minute? I'm sure John is thinking, if he can't get me out of prison, is he really the Messiah, which means liberator? Maybe that's what he really wanted to say. John rightfully discouraged, and he can't see. So Jesus told John's posse, since John can't see, you go and tell him what you have seen and what you have heard, and I just love that Jesus sent word back to John. He didn't leave John there in his wondering with no reply. Forget about him, we're moving forward. He didn't do that to John. He didn't leave John wondering where is the answer. He didn't take offense at John's doubt. He sent John an encouraging word. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with leprosy are healed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor receive good news. John can't see nor hear right now. 
any of the goodness of the Lord. So go tell John, Jesus said, what you hear and what you see. And some of us are like John. We're caught up in bad circumstances, bad situations. We're confused and disillusioned about what God is actually doing in the world. Christmas is approaching. We're supposed to be celebrating Jesus, but we simply have been through so much and are so isolated and we simply cannot see. The world seems to have gone crazy. The streets are dangerous. People will be sorely missed at the Christmas dinner table and some of us cannot hear nor see God doing anything. We're in a prison-like situation. We, you all know I, I've been engaging more and more with science. It's my background anyway, and theology. And, and I thank God for my friend Clara Takarabi our, Takarabi, our neuroscientist, and my friend who's teaching me so much. And, and, and yes, when you are consumed with your drama and your pain and your suffering, rightly so, it's difficult to hear and to see and to perceive anything beyond your situation. Some of us just simply need to begin to know that about ourselves. It's not our fault, but it is a reality. It's difficult to hear and see and perceive what God is doing, especially the good stuff. It would help us that we begin to know ourselves, that we're missing, possibly, God's actions in the world. Some of us are in a John-like state of mind, and we need to be like John and have our posse talk to Jesus on our behalf. If anybody have friends, you need to ask your friends every once in a while, would you pray for me? Because I'm going through so much, I can't seem to pray for myself. If you got a crew, ask your crew that they pray every once in a while. When you know you've been blinded by life circumstances and you can't see the good in the world, do like John and send somebody to Jesus on your behalf. And some of us then are like John's crew. We are not in the prison of tough situations and bad circumstances right now. We're actually quite free right now. We haven't been through the worst. We haven't been through much at all. And, and we see what's happening. But the reality is that things are going pretty good for us right now. So good that we actually can see. Those of us who can see need to do as Jesus told John's friends to do. We need to go and tell our friends who are in like John-like situations. We need to tell the Johns and the Johnettes in our lives what we see and what we hear. Because some of us see God moving in miraculous powerful ways. Some of us see God moving in radically new ways. Some of us have more hope for the future than we've ever had. And we shouldn't keep it to ourselves. We need to encourage somebody who's discouraged right now that God is doing a mighty work. Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? For instance, did you hear that our country just passed federal protections, not only for same-sex marriages, but also finally for interracial marriages? I had no idea until a couple of weeks ago that interracial marriages were not protected under the law. Embarrassed but grateful for both federal protections for same-sex marriages and interracial marriages, setting the oppressed free is the gospel. Did you hear that starting January 1st, there can be no cash bail in Illinois jails? Good news to the poor is indeed the gospel. And I know it's been several months now, but don't forget that we saw Katanji Brown Jackson confirmed as the first black woman to the Supreme Court. And according to reports, more blind are receiving their sight through her words and her involvement in the cases. 
The sight to the blind is indeed the gospel. And did you hear that Brittany Griner was released from hard labor prison by Putin and Russia in the midst of a war? Release of the captives is the gospel. I know it wasn't clean and it's controversial and I know that it's complicated. But it's also complicated that Jesus, the liberator, sent word to a man in prison who helped his ministry without setting him free. The complications are there that he has made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the healed, those with leprosy. It's complicated as so much of life is. But if you see what I see and hear what I hear, you might just see and hear a move of God. And I just pray that when I have days when I can't see and when I can't hear, what God is doing in the world because of my days of affliction and isolation and pain, that I have friends that will help me see through the complications what God is doing in the world. Ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? Oh, y'all don't want to talk this morning. Come on, somebody participate. Ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? There will always be examples of God moving because God is always moving. The things that Jesus said would happen in the Gospels because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him are happening right before our eyes. Do you see what I see when you see good overcoming evil? No matter how complicated, when you see justice prevailing, when you see light shining in darkness, when you see liberation occurring before your very eyes, you are seeing a move of God. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, my Bible tells me there is liberty. So I ask you again, do you see what I see? Sometimes, here's the problem, we can't see beyond what we came to see. I'll come back and get you, don't worry, the plot thickens. After John's friends leave to go visit John in prison, Jesus turns to the crowd. See, that's why I added verse 1 back in, because verse 1 tells us what Jesus came there for anywhere. He came to teach the people and proclaim his message of the kingdom of God. John's posse intercepted a teaching moment, so Jesus uses it. Verse 7 says, as they went away, John's friends, to go visit John in prison, Jesus began to speak to the crowd and said, what did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaking in the wind, what then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes, what did you go to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. This is the one who scripture said, I'm sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John. He lifts John up. And then he says, yet the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus is now dealing with the crowd's sight asking them what they came to see. When they went to see John in the wilderness, because some of them went to see John, and some of them were baptized by John, and some may have even idolized John, but now John is in prison. And if their hope was in John, what has happened to their hope? Even if their hope was in Jesus, which is what John came to do, what has happened to their hope in Jesus, who has not been able to get John out of prison. They may have the same question for Jesus that John had. Are you the Messiah or are we still waiting for another? 
Jesus asked them, when you went out to see John, what did you go to see? Because that which we come to see may be all that we're able to see. What did you come to see? Jesus asked the question because he knows that our expectations can limit our vision. And we'll only see what we came to see and nothing more. What did you come to see? Jesus asked the question because he knows that when what we came to see disappoints us, we'll leave and feel justified in doing so. What did you come to see? Jesus asked because what we came to see is consequential and limiting. And Jesus doesn't want to leave us there. Jesus doesn't want to leave us looking at the wrong things. Jesus does not want us content with temporal things while lacking power and remaining sad and oppressed and hopeless, disillusioned by the things we came to see. And it makes me just love Jesus all over again. It's such good news that Jesus doesn't want to leave the crowd where they are. Upset because John is in prison, giving up on the whole movement. Jesus doesn't leave them. He could have walked away. But he asked them a poignant question. What did you come to see? It's so awesome that Jesus worked to not leave the crowd, that one or this one, Doubting because what we came to see didn't impress us enough to be part of God's plan for the world. Jesus was not starting a religion, but he was teaching and ushering in the kingdom of God. And it's so far beyond what people came to see when they came to see John. Jesus wanted them to expect more. It's so far beyond what you may have come to see this morning. So please expect more from God than what you will get in this sanctuary. It's beyond one person, which is why he said, what did you come to see when you came to see John? This isn't about John. It's beyond one church and even the spectacular that they can offer you. So hold on and expect more. Expect the kingdom of God where justice prevails, love reigns, joy is abundant, and peace is everlasting. Change what you've come to see and start expecting to see God in your life. Do you see what I see? I see people being put in critical positions to aid the cause of love and justice and peace. Do you see what I see? I see resources finally being put towards efforts of healing and community building and anti-violence and anti-racism and there's so much work to do and resources needed but it's happening and I see more coming. Do you see what I see? I see amazingly smart and talented and caring people of all nationalities and faith traditions caring for the earth its creatures and for their fellow human. Do you see what I see? I see the advanced sciences exploring and leaning more, learning more, excuse me, about how we as humans function and heal so that we can function and heal. Do you see what I see? I see theology connecting with science to heal trauma and address social ills. Do you see what I see? I see more and more efforts to repair and restore people of African descent as well as people of, in, of indigenous, indigenous people of this land. And I see more conversations about human rights around the globe. Do you see what I see? I see High Park Union Church growing in number and more importantly growing in impact in people's lives and in the community. If we all look closely, do like this with our lenses, 
Get past the prison bars we are in. Get past the disappointment and the sadness and the frustration of our story. If we've got friends that are praying for us, we'll go to Jesus with some questions for us. If we hear what they come back and say, and if we are willing to clean our lenses, I'm confident that we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living with signs that there's so much more to come. We will indeed see that we are blessed. We serve a God, I'm almost done, of infinite possibilities who inspire hearts and invigorate minds to keep moving towards God's promise of a kingdom, a land, a place, a, an environment, a society where love and peace and justice reign. And as we get closer to Christmas and the lights are lit, the trees are up, the candles and the wreaths and the bulbs and the garland, ask yourself, what did I come to see? And keep looking for God through all the frills and through all the pain. Keep coming and keep expecting more. Keep being the more you'd like to see in the world. Keep being that. Be the change you hope to see. Be justice. Be equity. Be love. For the more we come to see, the more we will see. And the more we'll participate in God's plan for the world. And we will see that Jesus will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. God bless you.